Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Stone Days by Taito Games. Stone Days is for two to four players, and it is a game in which you're going to be collecting these, or uh, using these cave families. You've got the Golden Spirit Clan and the Black Water Clan. And as you can see here, they're all happy and uh, go lucky until uh, they realize there's not enough space in the area for the bo both of the clans. And so they're gonna go fighting each other. Now, obviously the game is for about 10 and up and it takes about an hour to play as you go back and forth. And the game is similar to Battleship with a little extra known um, location strategy, as well as games that involve um, almost like strategic placement. But anyway, let me go ahead and show you what the game looks like and I'll take you into a couple turns of the game. Okay, so here we have all the components for Stone Days. Now the first thing you're going to notice is we got these little guys here with the little arrows pointing the direction they'll be facing. We've got these small little pins here which we'll be using to put into the guys' top of the heads here, which will represent a bonk, which means whenever they get hit by something, they're going to take a bonk. And at two bonks, they die. <laughs> You've got over here, these are going to be your special actions that you'll be using throughout the game. These will, over here, these black ones will either be your movement or your turning to face, um, the way you're going to turn your face to get your guy. These little things here look like bowling pins, kind of, are going to be your clubs, which we're going to be throwing at people. If you remember games like that old uh, Zack and Dak game, where you're throwing the huge clubs at Tyrant Tyrannosaurus Rexes and stuff like that, that's kind of like that. this. So, we also going to come up with a bunch of terrain markers here, and these things are going to reflect uh, how you can stand on them or duck to avoid different objects. You're going to have chits over here that represent fireballs and flame and even the dreaded pterodactyl. And finally, you have even smaller little bunkers here, and these specifically are going to be the water area, which you can climb over if you have ladders. How are you going to do that, though? You're going to use your characters, and these are the character cards you're going to be getting. In the game, you're going to be getting seven for each different clan. If you're playing a two-player game, one player will get seven, and the other player will get seven as well. If you're playing a four-player game, you have two teams. Two players will just share these guys, and two other players will share the other team. At the bottom of all of these things here represent the different kinds of abilities they have, and over here will represent their movement. So whenever you want to move your guy, if you want to move him forward, you represent it like that, backward, like that, right, and left, and then any of the diagonals as well as using special abilities, just like that. But anyway, that's all the components that come with the game. Let me go ahead and talk about the turn. Okay, so I've cleared the board and we're gonna begin setup. So you have all of one clan's characters over here and the others over here and they are off the board. Now the first thing you're going to do is to have one of the clans select where to place one of their objects. The next clan will do the same. After they have chosen the locations for each of their objects, each clan will get to place a miniature on the board anywhere from the third space down all the way across. So any of these areas here. There's going to be numbers or colors over here that represent the spaces so it's easier to see. Boop and boop. Continuing to do so, you just keep placing just like this. And then once again, more miniatures. Place here, here, and another miniature. And you're going to keep doing this until all of the characters and everything has been placed. And as you see, there's a line right down the middle. That is where you can place yours for your side and where your opponent can place theirs for their side. It is, there's definitely a lot of strategical things you can do in order to determine where you want to be placing these things and why. But for speed and relevancy sake, we will just go ahead and speed it up. Realizing though that you can also jump on top of these boulders here. So that's pretty useful. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, so this guy's a little too far. And this, and this. Find the little guys. All right, and now setup is complete. All of the characters that you have should be set up on the side of the board here, on these sides over here. And you should be getting ready to start up the turns. Okay, so now we're looking at just the Gold Spirit Clan and we will show you how to begin for the first uh, phase of the turn. You're going to be placing these little, um, these little circular, circular magnetic, magnetic pieces anywhere you'd like on uh, your character slot, which will dictate where they're going to move. So for instance, if you look at this guy, you'll notice him, he's over here, he'll be moving forward because when you put it up here in this forward spot, he goes up, back, left or right, and any of the diagonals, as well as if he goes right in the middle here, he stays where he is. Also to note that you can actually turn this piece over onto the silver side and make him turn direction so he'll actually be facing this way, going that way, if you wanted to do that. There's, and lastly, for movement especially, there is this red thing here which you can place right in the middle of the board which will make the character turn a 180 so it'll go from front to back just like that as well as using this 
little these little guys here, the red ones here, to be put on any of these spaces here, which will count as a special movement. For instance, let's go over a couple of them here. The is the, there's the ladder, which will allow a character to move this specific character to move from one area to another across the water. The fireball here is actually a chit, which looks just like this guy right here, and you can throw it, and it'll go into a spot. And it'll affect this spot this turn and this spot the next turn. Wherever you throw it, you have a three range on it, one, two, or three. And then if you choose the center one here, the next turn it'll go right here. Also, you will have fire. So right here, this is a fire one. And you can throw it. And if it hits the, it'll hit the board somewhere, and you can choose a direction for the fire. So maybe I choose this way. It'll burn this space and this space for the first turn. If it's the last, the second turn, it'll burn this space, and then it'll get removed. There's another one cool, it's a little pterodactyl, which we'll talk about uh, in a little bit here. But we'll go over a couple of the other non-specials that actually just involve movement. So this is a two movement. This involves healing. Uh, this one over here instantly bonks and, and removes a character from the game. So if you get a good sniper hit with this gal, then <laughs> that character is done for. Anyway, let's go ahead and place the, the movement spaces now. And then we'll show you how it works. So while you're doing this, and you're going to get seven of these red things to use whenever you want, but it's only, you only get seven of them for the entire game. I'll show you a couple of movements. We're just going to move forward. Now I'll also, if I mess up here, I'll explain why. So I've gone ahead and I've placed all of my movements here, and your opponent will do the same. Afterward, you're going to look at all of your guys, and you're going to be able to shoot. And you're going to use these little clubs here to throw. Now you can do, for instance, a character, like this character here, he's going to have a range of three to six. So he gets six forward, and he gets one on each side in the middle area, and you can choose any space there. Now, you can, there's a couple exceptions. You cannot throw it behind a rock that is being blocked, it's because basically it's saying you can't see this area. So if there's a guy, maybe like right here, then I could not throw it here if I had the range. One, two, three, four, five, and six, so I, I can't place it here. However, I could place it here or here. Each character is going to get one of these to throw, and the ones that are also behind rocks do not get to throw. So this guy, for instance, will not get to throw, but every other guy will. So we'll do it. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And we'll put it on the rock here. One, two, three, four, five, and six, just like that. And you would keep going around putting the the different little, I guess these little uh, clubs here, wherever you can, based on the spaces allotted. Um, this guy can't throw, oh, this guy can't throw actually, so we'll just keep that aside. One, two, three, four, five, and six, or fives, and right, one on the right. And one, two, three, four, five, and six, so we'll go right here, I guess. Now you would do that, and your opponent would also get a chance to do that as well. We'll just give an example of where he's placing them though. Just like that. After you have both done that, you're both going to throw your boards down and show what you have done for this specific turn. Whether you have used any of these reds, then you'll go ahead and do those specific actions, or whether or not you've moved, decided to move twice or something like that. If not, if you haven't done any special actions, you all just simply move, and I'll show you a little movement an example for just this guy, these guys right here. So we'll look at this guy over here. He gets to move up one, so he moves up one right on top there. Then we got the big bearded dude here, and he moves up one. <laughs> we got the sad, grumpy bearded dude here. Man, they're all bearded dudes, aren't they? He moves up one. <laughs> guy with a nose ring, a little bit of a nose ring. He's going to go up. Oh, actually, this guy's going to go left, I think. So he'd go over here. And then we got our, our, our gal over here. Now, she can't go this way because it would go off the board. So if you ever made a misplay like that, I'm not sure exactly what would happen, but I imagine you'd have to just stay still. Now, there's obviously illegal moves. Uh, so I would assume that she would have gone forward there. And if she did, and the enemy had one of these guys here, it would bonk her. And a bonk is simply one damage, and you use one of these little pins here, and you just put it on top of her head. Now, I'm sure that the game will come with something different, probably for the non-Kickstarter, or for the Kickstarter-related version, not for the prototype. But this signifies that she got a damage. If she gets another one, it goes away. And we got a couple other guys here. So <laughs> to make a movement here. So she would go forward. If she went forward, she would take a bonk. And rinse and repeat. Now your objective in the game is to try and get your characters all the way across the board. And if you can get any, any one of them across the board first, you're the winner. If it's a tie, you go for the next character. And finally this guy over here. He's a super angry grumpy mad. He would go right up here, dodging all of these. That's great. 
after that, you would simply reset all of the attacks as well as the characters. We could just leave them just like this. And then you just start moving them for the next round, wherever you'd like to place them. And remember, you have seven of these to use. But be aware that once you've used them all, that is all that you get to use for the game. Otherwise, though, that is basically how you play the game. And your objective, obviously, is to get to the end without having all your characters bonked out and to bonk as many as you possibly can as well. Okay, so a few points to mention now. Obviously, you need to check as to where you're going to be moving before you move there. And if it's an illegal move, you can't do that. So I know I messed up a couple times on that example. And you're supposed to be moving where you can move, uh, where you're allowed to move. Uh, you know, always, you can always go across things and onto things. However, there are certain spaces you can't move onto, which is obviously the lake here. You have to have a ladder, and that ladder is one of the special abilities on a different character. For instance, there's this one right here, which has the ladder, and you can choose to use that to go across the lake, which is a kind of interesting thing. If you're on top of these spaces here, it will give you a plus one to range, making that six a seven in length, as well as you cannot hit anybody behind it, or if you are behind one, you cannot throw as well. Uh, the small ones react the same way, and uh, this little gate here, which I talked about, showed you a little bit of, the, both these sides you can't go through, but through the middle you can, and you can only go through it based on the direction this little thing is pointing, so it's kind of like a little gate entrance, and once you go in, you cannot come out. Also, there is going to be all the different characters. There's seven of them, and they all do different things, and they all have special abilities to use. Um, they don't have any names on them currently, but you can tell that you can tell them apart quite easily based on all the different uh, symbols, as well as the different types of beards they've got going on. Even the uh, even the ladies have quite a bit of hair. <laughs> So, and yeah, you're going to get your Blackwater Clan and your Golden Spirit Clan. And obviously you need to get to the end of the board without getting bonked out and stopping your opponent from getting to the end of the board. If somebody goes across you, you can actually turn 180 using that red special ability and you can actually try and bonk them to stop them from getting there. And that is the basics for how you play Stone Days. All right, so Stone Days by Taito Games. Well, first of all, it works really, really well as a one, a two, two player game, so 1v1. It also works really well as a 2v2. Now, as a three player game, I'm not so sure uh, because you're gonna have to divvy up different two versus one kind of a thing. It's better if you have two character, two players for each side. And it's also nice because you guys can converse together secretly as to where you think your opponents are gonna move. And the idea, idea of the game is you're trying to find out in what spaces those guys are gonna go and how they're trying to outsmart you. So it's kind of like a bluff on top of a bluff on top of a bluff, right? He's going left. Oh wait, he think I think he's going left so he's gonna go forward. That's why he's going right. And so you're always kind of confuddled with where you think they're gonna go. And sometimes they might be using their powers. And it's always a shock to me whenever I'm playing this game how they're just randomly going to like oh you just got bopped off and I'm like oh I didn't even see the guy who was able to do that also you have to realize too you have to throw prior to before you move so that was the thing that I, I got a little cut up got up with as well as when you throw you can't be behind blocks as well as your opponents uh, cannot be hit behind blocks so those are very important things another really cool thing I wanted to note in the review was the pterodactyl which was really fun basically with this character here this little gal she if, if one of your characters is removed or any characters are removed you're able to use the pterodactyl and what it will let you do is you'll place it right behind the girl in that row and it will fire just like a range attack would, a three by six, except it would be a three by the entire board. And you can select two spaces in that three by the entire board. It's like two spaces to be throwing. So you'd be throwing hers as well as the removed character's uh, club. So be aware that that's a really cool little ability. And there's a couple other ones I didn't want to, I wanted to save so you could kind of test it out for yourself. The river is very interesting if whether or not somebody wants to use that ability. And sometimes the most likely choice is not the choice, most of the time is not the choice that your opponents are going to make because they're thinking you're thinking that. But who knows, it just depends on the player, right? Overall, the quality of the game is great. The wood pieces are great. It's very distinctual as to how where your where your pieces are uh, facing. It, even even seeing the characters is pretty easy to tell them apart. Uh, another little clue you could do is at the beginning of the game when you get the characters, simply organize them from left to right based on the characters that you've placed on the board, and that would give you a little bit of a a map. And obviously, it's going to change a little bit, and you can change it if you want throughout the game. But you'll have an idea, and the game's pretty quick. It's only about forty five minutes to an hour. We're able to play the game pretty really fast and the characters that are very powerful are obviously the double speed characters because they can zoom across the map however they are also the first ones to be targeted the artwork on the game is great it reminds me of that zack and Zack and zack game from 
oh, I don't know, from Sony, and you throw in the batons at the animals and, you you know, the little pterodactyls and the tyrannosaurs and stuff like that, <laughs> and you got your partner and you're just kind of collecting skill ups and stuff. It's almost like a, it's like a platformer game, but it just feels just like that game. And I really, really like that game and gave me a great amount of nostalgia when playing this game, remembering my childhood of tossing the, <laughs> the clubs at dinosaurs. But anyway, Stone Days. Okay guys, thank you for watching Stone Days. If you like this, check out the Kickstarter going on right now. So do make sure to do that. <laughs> thank you, Gurf. <laughs> now, also go ahead and check out our Unfiltered Gamer website where we get tons of blog posts, giveaways, and other stuff, as well as all the content here on YouTube. We do lots of blog posts. Yeah, we do lots of videos and reviews and all that good stuff. So do go ahead and subscribe, like, and comment. Everything helps. As well as checking out our affiliate sites, everythingboardgames.com, The Giveaway Geek, and Yavitos Gaming. They have a lot of content, even more than my own. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this one. And we look forward to seeing you next time.